It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 388, Valuable Things and Can't Live Without, by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome, fellow oldie, and that's not me calling you old, because old or OLD stands for Optimal Living Daily. That's this podcast, where I read to you from some amazing authors, with permission, of course. And I saw an email, someone sent me a message saying that when I say, with author permission, It sounds like I'm saying without their permission. (laughs) I never realized that, so thanks for pointing that out. So I'll try to rephrase that whenever I mention it. Anyway, it is with their permission, and I'm very grateful to all the authors who I read on this show and our three other podcasts. By the way, if you haven't checked out the other three podcasts where we read blogs to you, please do. My brother hosts one, that's Optimal Health Daily, and on Fridays he answers your health questions. There's Optimal Finance Daily, where Dan reads you the best blogs on saving money and spending less. It's not too technical, and many authors are the same ones that I read right here, so definitely check that out. And I'm hosting my second podcast with my business partner, that's Optimal Startup Daily, where we read to you from the best entrepreneurial blogs. It's very motivating and full of useful information if you have your own business or looking to start one. You can find all those podcasts by searching for Optimal Living Daily. And it's Minimalist Monday, I don't wanna make this too long, I have two short posts for you today, so let's get right to them as we optimize your life. Valuable Things by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com Possessions can make us happier, but only if we own the right things. I should note that this doesn't mean possessions are a replacement for experiences and relationships and a rich internal life. Most ideally, the things we own are mere additions to a fulfilled existence. They add spice to something that's already satisfying and satiating. But all too often, the things we bring into our lives become anchors instead of wings. They don't slake our thirst, they just make us more parched. This can result in a spiral of consumption that, for many, lasts their entire lives. It's important to question one's own feeling about things because there's a consistent low-level manipulation happening around us at all times. Like having just a little more oxygen in the air than usual, it's unlikely that we notice the addition, yet it can still influence our behavior, adjust our priorities, and even hijack our rationality. Many of us don't have experience doing the math that might help us ascertain what a thing is actually worth to us. Is this thing I'm thinking about buying a subjectively valuable thing? Will it fulfill my needs, my wants, my priorities? Will it help me get where I want to be? Will the price I pay for it be a good investment? Will I net more than $500 of value from a $500 television? How much more? and what other costs, monetary and otherwise, are associated with owning such a thing. I find that working through these figures helps pour cold water on the riled up reflexes that can flare during holiday seasons and sales. Clever marketing elevates the tempo on our internal must-consume chemical cocktails, and getting really specific, truly granular about how I intend to use something and what specific value I will derive from it helps me maintain a semblance of rationality, even when something is really cool and available at a deep discount. Will I use this nifty device all the time? Will that use justify its cost and the space it occupies in my life and in my home? Is there some other way to achieve the same end without accruing a new possession? Is there some other way I'd rather be spending this money? Will I feel better knowing this money is there in the bank, available at need in the future? Or will I feel better knowing I've spent it, the money lost to me forever on this thing? We can make use of the systems that are out there, the same ones that try to manipulate us and which compel us to consume, but we can only do so if we know what we want, why we want it, and what it's worth to us. If we don't have an understanding of ourselves and our hopes, needs, priorities, and yes, financial realities, then we can't hope to consume intentionally, to buy assets rather than just more stuff. Can't Live Without by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com If you had to make a list of things you couldn't live without, what would be on it? What people, possessions, ideas, foods are so important that without them, you would not, could not, would even want to go on. I aspire to keep my list empty, not because I'm a hateful person or vacant of joy, but rather because I prefer to internalize my happiness. I don't want it to be dependent on anything outside of me, outside of my control. Consider that you can have a life rich with amazing friends and family, foods and experiences, possessions and creations, and not lean on any of them, meaning that if they were to disappear, you wouldn't be crushed. You'd be truly saddened by the loss of a loved one, obviously, 
and the destruction or loss of a phone or other gadget tends to put a pall over an otherwise wonderful night, but to not be able to live without something goes a step further than that. It implies that you are defined by these people, these activities, these things. They're such a part of you that were they to disappear, so would you. That's not healthy. It's not stable. It's not something worth striving for, these entanglements with entities and objects outside your person. People can leave and that's their right. Objects can be stolen or destroyed because such is the nature of objects. If you can find your happiness internally, your satisfaction with life derived from how you experience the world, not in the experiences themselves, then your quality of life is determined by you, not some external factor. Don't shut out the world around you, but don't depend on it either. Trust that you have everything you need to be happy already and the myriad influences around you only add to that. You can enjoy the world more freely, in fact, knowing that you need to always be on guard against your wonderful thing disappearing, leaving you with nothing. Because there is no nothing. Even in an empty room, you've always got you. Make sure you're excellent company. You just listened to the posts titled Valuable Things and Can't Live Without, both by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. I already mentioned it at the top of the show, so I'll make it really quick. If you like this show and want to hear more blogs being read to you for free, search for Optimal Living Daily in the podcast app of your choice, and you should see all four of our podcasts. They all have a similar icon, so they're easy to spot. Definitely check them out and subscribe. It'd be a nice gesture if you do, and you'll learn just as much from those podcasts too. And I think that's it for today. Happy Monday and first week of the year. I hope it's off to a great start. I'll see you in the Tuesday show tomorrow with a post from Steve Pavlina, where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.